Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's talk about rotational motion, and then we'll look at a specific example of a merry-go-round. Let's think about some of the parameters here for rotational motion. So if I start with my normal Cartesian coordinate system, x and y, and now I have an object that is moving around in a circle, how can I define that object's position well, I can of course give it an x and y, but I can also give it an r and a theta. And these are our polar coordinates, and any time you're dealing with circular motion, it makes sense to give it r and theta, particularly because r doesn't change as a function of time. Okay, so what are some of the characteristics of this? Well, if I go one full rotation, how far have I gone in distance. Anybody remember the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. 2 pi r, right? Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. All right, we remember that. So, if I do one full rotation, and I do it in one period, T, some measurement in time, then what can I say about the speed of that object? Well, speed is just distance over time, and so we can say it's S over T, which is 2 pi R over T. Okay, and the units work out right, R is meters, T is seconds, that's meters per second. Everything else is unitless. Good. Let's talk about the merry-go-round problem and see if we can make some sense of this. So our object is now going to be you sitting on a merry-go-round, and you are going around on this merry-go-round, and we tell you the radius of the merry-go-round, and we tell you the period of the merry-go-round, and we need to figure out what our speed is. Okay, and let's try some different numbers uh, than we used earlier. Uh, let's say that the merry-go-round goes around, uh, I don't know, what's a, what's a typical period of a merry-go-round? Trying to remember Disneyland with my kids, right? Maybe 10 seconds for once around the merry-go-round? Okay, 10 seconds to go around once. And uh, merry-go-round can be pretty big, right? Certainly the ones at Disneyland are rather large. They probably have a, a diameter of maybe 10 meters. Okay, this is the diameter. If that's the diameter, then R is, of course, 5 meters. That's the radius. And now let's calculate the following. Let's figure out what our initial speed is. Is. Okay, well, we just showed you the formula for that. That's not too bad. The initial speed is just how far you go and how long it takes. The distance that we go once around is 2 pi r. How long it takes is the period t. And so we get 2 pi times r, we said was 5 meters. T, we just said, was 10 seconds. And we chose some numbers rather nicely, right? We've got 10 pi over 10. And so that is, in fact, pi. And the units are meters per second. So how fast are you going? In our case, you're going 3.14 meters per second. So let's add a little complication. Let's say that the merry-go-round is going to slow down to a stop. And let's see if we can figure out how far it's going to rotate as it slows to a stop. Okay, we've got a merry-go-round that is initially spinning, and it's spinning at a speed of 3.14 meters per second. The person on the edge of the merry-go-round is going around that fast. And let's ask the question, how far will it rotate if it comes to a stop in 50 seconds? How many rotations is it going to go through? All right, I need your help on this one. Anybody have an idea of how we can proceed here?
Yeah, Doug in the back there. You go to the kinematic equation. Okay, let's go back to our kinematic equations. That sounds like a great idea. All right, kinematic equations we always wrote in x and y. Let's write one of them, x final equals x initial plus vx initial times t plus one half ax t squared. But of course we're in rotational motion here and so we don't really want to use x anymore. We should probably use s final equals s initial plus v initial times t plus one half a t squared. And this is going to be the arc length. How far around have we gone? What is our distance around the edge that we've gone? All right, what do we know here? Well, we can measure from where we started, and so we say that's zero. V initial, we already have that. We also know T, time, but we don't know A. And we don't know this number right here. All we know is that this thing is slowing to a stop, which means it does have some acceleration, right? There's something that's slowing down this merry-go-round, but we don't know exactly what that acceleration is. So, this equation looks like it's not going to do it for us. Is there another kinematic equation that we can use? Can we raise your hand? If you came to lecture, you know the answer. Yes, Laura. Um, for S final um, equals S initial plus one half and then um, times S initial plus S final um, times T. I'm not sure that's what you said, but that's what you meant to say, right? Yeah. Okay. So this, where does this come from? Well, you have a kinematic equation that looks like this. And so we just transfer this into our arc length S. And the idea is that if you are moving at constant acceleration or constant deceleration, same thing, then your movement is just the average of your initial velocity and your final velocity. It's your average velocity, okay? And so that's all we're saying here is that how far is this thing going to move? Well, it's the average velocity. And we know all these things now. We start at zero. We have a VI, which we just solved for. We end at zero. The final speed is zero because we come to rest. And so now we can calculate SF. Right? We have one half times VI, which we just found was, strangely, pi meters per second. And T, we said, was 50 seconds. Okay, so one half times pi times 50. Well, what's that? Half of 50 is 25. 25 times pi, that's a little bit more than 75. We'll say uh, maybe 78. Somebody punch that into your calculator and tell me what you get. And this is in units of meters. That's how far you've gone around the edge of the merrier. So how many rotations is that? Well, it is how far you've gone divided by the distance of one rotation. And now look what something really exciting happens, right? Because we have those interesting numbers, SF is 25 pi. Down here we have 2 pi times the radius. What did we say the radius was? Five, five meters. Okay. So this becomes 25 
over 10, which is two and a half. Two and a half revolutions, and uh, then you come to a stop. All right, any questions about that? Okay, so I'll rely on these kinematic equations. We had x, we had y, we're just writing them again with some new variables. Okay. All right, if that's not clear, definitely come see me in office hours. Cheers. <laughs>